Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, everybody? I'm just going to move this over here for a second. Welcome. It is Tuesday night. We got a bit different lighting this time. Uh, I took a, a book out of, or, or took a page out of Gen Z's book and got my hands on one of these uh, ring light things, which really is just. It's, it's been sitting in the gallery because they take pictures of um, their tattoos and it looks really good when they do that. It's a great thing. Gen Z <laughs> has it right. I'm just, I'm just calling it, calling it what, I, what I think it is. It almost looks like some kind of like portal and Stargate or something like that. But um, yeah, I figured uh, I did enough painting the last couple episodes. I have a book to finish uh, and I've been really putting a lot of energy into figuring out ways to make this live stream cool when really I set out to do all in a day's work back before I even, well not before I thought of the live stream, but before I uh, really made the live stream a priority and I guess before I had this brain blast that I could just get work done, especially with my uh, relatively busy schedule. I won't say it's super busy, but it's definitely, definitely I, I need the freedom. I need to be able to go out and do things uh, the second somebody asks, uh, you know, just because of money and I don't think I phrased that properly. Let me think about that again. Basically, I need the freedom to be able to work and also feel like I'm, do like I'm, I'm getting a lot of shit done while also having the freedom to just say, hey, you want to do this for a day and make a little extra bucks, you could do that. Um, I don't remember why I started this tangent, but uh, I, I figured it's time to, to end it now. <laughs> but uh okay I'm I'm looking at the uh looking at the uh streamlabs and it seems that there's no issues at the moment there's no uh latency um so a couple things I guess before I get started um I found a couple things that uh excited me now just for reference I brought back um stalagmite number 1 just to show you, oh, it looks really good. It looks really good in this light. I really fucked up not using this light. It looks really good. Um, and it doesn't look too, like, like the white balance isn't crazy. I guess I'll have to, um, uh, adjust my, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> my perspective on it when, uh, that was the worst way to say that, but when I start using pencil. Or I'll make a final judgment. There you go. What the fuck was I saying? Um, I'll make a final judgment when I start using pencil, but uh, for the most part, this looks really, really good, and my beard doesn't blend into my shirt because um, of, I guess, the way the, the camera white balances things. But anyway, this is stalagmite number one. I remember I made reference to. Oh, so much it does, right? It looks awesome. And see, this this is what this is what documentation is all about. You can come with me on my journey and see it improve. I hope it improves. But this is this is that painting that I just finished up. I actually found, I thought I ripped it up, which I never do, but I think I was angry at this one. Um, yeah, I never ended up finishing it. I felt like I, I kind of, I really tried a lot of things, but this is, this is the initial stalagmite. I think I fucked up the, the meat, the stalagmites, the stalagmite beef, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, hell yeah, man. Thank you, Oliver. I really appreciate that. And I'm stoked. We made a lot of improvements today. Uh, me and Brittany finally installed our AC unit after an entire summer of sweating. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to sleep really well tonight. But also, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess this is the way to do it. It's a bit blinding. It's a bit of an adjustment. But um, I'm fucking stoked that, that it looks really good. So that's this. Um, uh, what's it called? This is this is the original idea, and I normally see ideas through, but this just kind of seemed foobar, uh, and sort of just not uh, savable. I'm sure if I really worked at it, but it just wasn't working. So my head was in it. I figured I'd redo it. I took I took my um, I'll redo it card, which I I think I'm I definitely have a lot in the reservoir, and. Uh, I, I applied it to this one because I like the name. The name Stalagmi really, I feel like aesthetically, is very much um, in line with a lot of the things that I want to express in my art. 
But, uh, yeah. Uh, what else? So, Saturday at Massapequa VFW, I am playing a show with my, with my band, John the Movie. Oh, you can't. Okay, now, now I'm finding the one drawback of this light in that when you have shiny things, it reflects. But uh, this is that tape. And I, you know, when we put these out, I think Nick from New Moralities and got rid of all these, all his. I still have a hell of a lot of mine because I really didn't do merch when we played our show. And I didn't push it all. I don't want to say I didn't push it all that hard. I did push it pretty hard. But I don't think, I don't, don't think, there was just a couple of things that maybe it just didn't hit as well as it uh, I would have liked anyway. But that's, I'm learning that that's just part of this whole thing. But what's cool about this and why I was upset that uh, I didn't sell out of these at right off the bat is that there's a fucking J card comic strip. Who does that? Who does that besides me? That's innovative, you know? And it's crazy. It's a whole lot of stuff. The, the only thing that I really regret about this is that I was making this also at a time where I was working on so many other things and I was like so burnt that there's a typo. I'm going to point it out on record. Uh, any glimmer of hope will quickly be met will irrational circumstance. That's going to bother me to the day I fucking die. But... It's kind of one of those things that it's, it's also a reminder that it's, you got to balance things out and, uh, I don't know, slow down a bit. I thought that I had it in me to just fucking cruise until I, uh, not cruise, but pedal to the metal until I die. But I'm finding that I have limits as well. And it's things like this that make me realize, like, yeah, maybe you got to put things in, uh, you, you got to slow down a bit and you got to fucking, yeah. Yeah, listen, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm still getting used to how, how to be in this camera. Brittany Faraz goes, bad thing about the li this lighting is that you can't see shiny things. Proceeds to not hold the cassette uh, still. Because I'm just like... All right, I'm going to really try this time. Steady. Steady now. You like that? I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do a whole unboxing. Get a little closer. Yeah, sure. Don't do be that. shy. Don't be shy. This is the tape. Now it has the new morality zine. Has the Cauldron of Burgers logo. Because I guess technically Cauldron of Burgers, which is this, <laughs> um, uh, published the, the comic version of that. Which I'll do one more super still. Um, I guess look at it. It's not really. I'm trying to get it to focus. Hold on. There we go. Screenshot it. Yeah. Right. Save it for later. Um. And then yeah, here's the uh, the other side. Pretty cool. I love. I really like this EP for me. It was very very liberating to do because you know I always did dream of uh, writing like my own music. Um, and have people take it semi-seriously, uh, and it took me until I was almost 30 years old to really kind of dip my toes in. Uh, it also took, like, learning guitar, which takes time to be relatively decent at, which I don't know if I'm really in that ballpark just yet, but I can get my ideas across and convince other people to play my songs, so I guess I'm doing something right. Uh, convincing them without money, just, but, uh... <laughs> Shout out, shout out my band. But uh, you should, if, if you're in the area or feel like taking a drive, um, you should make your way to Massapequa VFW uh, Saturday night. It's with uh, Ennui, um, John the Movie, uh, Lesser Glows, God's Eyes, and Glassing. It's a Screamo show, I'm pretty sure. It's like mostly Screamo stuff, like like real scrams kind of stuff. And there's one proggy garage band on the bill, and that's me. But anyway, uh, what else? Do I have anything else to plug before I really get, get started with this? Oh, I, um, 
I'm gonna. I have a table at an art show at Rustin Gold tomorrow, which I won't be able to make, but Brittany is going to sit in for me. So, <laughs> uh, come buy some zines. I have a lot of zines. I also have those tapes uh, at the that will, they'll be at the table. So, uh, go to Rustin Gold. Listen to Alkaline Trio Radio on Spotify, and uh, maybe get some buffalo cauliflower or whatever the fuck people do in Huntington if they're Big stuck on the shows. It is very good. I don't want it. But, uh, yeah, all right. I, I think that's it. Oh, no, no, I think no, no, I think that is it. Okay. But anyway. Uh, okay. So, currently, I am on page five of All in a Day's work. Um, I still have to, like, fine-tune the last page I did on this uh, live stream because that was the last time I really worked on it. Uh... But at the moment, I'm really setting the stage and trying to build the character of um, Roach. His name's Roach Coach, but people call him Roach. He's a Roach Coach operator. Um, so a lot of what it is is kind of him just doing a little monologue, uh, just talking about, you know, not being thrilled about uh, getting up at the crack of dawn to go deliver uh, food to construction workers. But... You know, he has a very like, hey, it's a living sort of approach. Um, normally with comics, I will, I'll, I, I, every every comic I get a little bit better in that I, I'll uh, plan just a little bit more. Uh, Cosmic Debt was, at, like I had an idea and I'm like, all right, well, let me just see how far I could go before I start uh, just gassing out. And that was at 40 pages. And you can, I mean, I can see where I definitely started gassing. Like, I think the drawings just got a little simpler. And I would throw little flares here and there. Um, so I was like, all right. So drawing as I go is not the best approach. Uh, Quest for Materiality. I, I pretty much thumb, thumbnailed out everything, but I did not really, I had a pretty loose idea and I just, pretty much built on those thumbnails. Um, on all four zines, that was just all off the top of the head, but it wasn't like any in any sort of succession. It was just like, all right, I just, I, the plan is to make art and make it sort of comic uh, inspired art and, and sort of cerebral, surreal kind of whatever weird shit. Maybe have a little monologue about where my head's at at the time, which is a whole lot of inspirational stuff. Um, cause that, that is where, like if, if I were to try and put out anything into the world, I feel like that's, that's really my lane, uh, is just, uh, saying a bunch of inspirational mumbo jumbo. I like to be inspired. I, I hope that everyone else would, would be inspired too. And that's why I do it. But this time, this time, um, I started writing out a script. Now I, I think I'm about, I'm at like page six of the script. Uh, where this is, we're going to be drawing page five today. So, I don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, you can see it with this fucking light. It's very chicken scratch. It's very, uh, you know, just literally like angle, like pa like the panel in parentheses, angle, and then maybe just, just like the dialogue, and then panel number again. And then, uh, you know, the, the dialogue. So, like I said, pretty chicken scratch. Not, I mean, it, it just makes things a lot easier. Uh, and, I, and I'm finding that. I'm trying to make my life a lot easier so that these processes don't uh, become as laborious in every facet that I can possibly make it as possible, you know? Um, so yeah, this one I think is actually only four panels, so this should be a relatively quick stream. And I say that, and then I'm gonna be here till two o'clock in the morning, which I don't plan on doing. But um, yeah, I, I guess it's uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna fix my camera and have it just a little more uh, facing that a piece of paper. Ooh, look at that! That white balance adjusted. Look at that. Okay. So if I can just get a bit more. Um, okay, this, is, this is an inch. Okay. Uh, also, before I forget, 
big shout out to the gallery at for uh, letting me uh, do this live stream here. I don't really have a place to do it otherwise, and they've opened their doors to me to uh, you know make this little uh, dream become a little reality. So I appreciate them. I appreciate them letting me do this after hours. Thank you, Brittany. You're welcome. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. I think it's, it's time that I stop talking and I get into it. So, because this piece of paper is um, 14 by 17, what I like to do is uh, take off about three inches, because yeah, it's 14, not exactly, but 14. Um, you know, 14 minus uh, fucking three is 11. So I'm gonna mark off the page there and then I'm gonna sort of set a boundary here so that I have a true 11 by, or I guess, true 11 by 17 page. I'll just take it, I'm so thirsty. Refresh. Okay, can you can you just look at the screen and tell me if, if you can see everything I'm doing? Good, like come up close and see if my pencil lines are gonna show through. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh wow. See, now 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 I'm gonna pass full judgment and say this this is the way to go. You should be able to adjust it too if you needed. Everything. Yeah, yeah. I think this is because I adjusted it so that it's a little bit. Is um, it brightness and tone? Because sometimes it'll do like either like more yellow or more blue lighting too. Yeah, I, I, I just, don't know if this one. Does I think the, the 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 hue is good. The hue. The hue. The hue. The hue. <laughs> and I said this the last time, but I'll say it again for anybody that might be new here. Typically what I like to do is mark out a quarter inch bleed. It makes formatting easier. It makes a lot of things a lot easier. So. Makes formatting easier. Makes um, printing a lot easier as well. Because um, with bleeds, you know, there's, there's a, what's it called? I used to do this thing where I would just go to the end of the page, and I see it all the time in my old uh, comics and shit, uh, that I would just go all the way to the end of the page, and when I'd go to print it, it would be like, and you, you have to, like, I guess in professional printing, you do a lot of, um, it, it's not that you just print to the, the size of the page, it's, it's that you, you print the thing and then you cut it to size. Um, which I didn't know. I just thought that you just printed it. Like if it's an 11 by 17 piece of paper, then you just cut it to 11 by 17. Or, you know, you print on 11 by 17. But a lot of times they'll print on 13 by 19 or 12 by 18, and they'll um, they'll cut it to size. And it's just a cleaner edge. It it's just looks more professional that way. So, you know, that was that was from a working couple months in a print plant. Which had its moments, had its benefits, but... Also, is just fucking way too much. So yeah, typically I will, and I have to remind myself because I'm not used to doing this either. I'm really trying to stay organized. Um, okay. this ruler because it it gives you a, a nice thing to line up the edge of the page with. Very so cute. I 
I walked into a very, very nice print shop today. It was very quiet, it was very clean, and it was very air conditioned, <laughs> which is not what I'm used to. I don't think that that place was on the, the, the level of output that uh, the place I used to work with was, because this place, the place I worked with had like a, a, like a Heidelberg, which is one of like the high speed printing presses. So that really made them a, uh, an asset more than just like a print shop. But yeah, you know, so, so, sometimes with with sometimes you you learn a lesson that if if means of production means that you're gonna or, or, or producing means that you're gonna be an insane person, then maybe it's uh, maybe you gotta slow down a bit. Maybe that's the theme of this uh, episode: is uh, slow down a bit. You know, I wouldn't mind it. I don't know if this is for sure to a, a quarter inch bleed. It might be a bit crooked, uh, but um, make sure that that looks good. Might be a bit crooked, but that's okay because it really is just for reference. It's not, it's not fucking dire that it's. A quarter inch. It's just to help me because then I'm I'm gonna move out a quarter inch from that, and therefore I'm gonna have a lot of space that say I do want to get this printed. It's gonna make everybody's lives a lot easier. But anyway, since this is a poor poor a four panel Jesus fuck a four panel uh, uh, page. Typically, what I like to do is. Um, Typically what I like to do is make it just like an equal four boxes. It probably won't exactly be that, but it'll be very close to it. it. Might be, sometimes I'll like stagger the boxes almost like a brick pattern when I do that. Just just for like, I don't know, I guess to be, to look cool. So it's 17, my, so it's like 16 and a half, which, what's 16 and a half divided by two? That's like eight and a quarter. It's gonna have to be. It's funny too because I, I eventually got one of my books printed at that job I was talking about. And they're like, hey, you're really good at this. Why don't you do this full time? I'm like, well, because I'm fucking here 12 hours a day. <laughs> you know? My manager was like the world's biggest. Pearl Jam fan. He had a humongous, humongous framed picture of Eddie Vedder above his desk. Like it took up the entire wall kind of shit. Devastated when Taylor Hawkins died also, which I think the, most of the world was, but.
That looks pretty cool. I like it. I'm so happy about this fucking lighting. Okay, so panel one, Roach opens doors to the, tr to the truck, inside view with speech bubbles coming from out of frame. All right. Okay, money, we children. Did I, did I, no, I don't know if I drew this up. Did I, oh, I don't know, I can't yet. Let me see, I, 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 hold on. I feel like I might have, which would be awesome, because then I have to think a little less. Oh, I did! I did! I did! I did! <laughs> ah, fuck. Okay. So yeah, this this is gonna be a pretty easy one. <sighs> okay. Can you see that? You can see that. Okay. Cool. I had a feeling. I read that over. I was like. I feel like I feel like that uh I've done that already. Which makes me really happy. Cause like I said, that means I, I get to think less. And I, I was kinda of beating myself up because I wanted to prepare uh just a little bit, at least get uh sort of an idea of what I was doing uh tonight for the live stream, but I ended up the day kind of ended up getting away from me. I was practicing guitar for the John the Movie show. I was uh, running some errands. What the fuck else did I do today? Maybe I'm just an idiot. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, we installed the air conditioner. All good things, but it was, there was a good chunk of time. There. Oh, I, I, okay, that's what I did. I also went to Starbucks to get some work done on their Wi-Fi. Um, but yeah, that's a bit over, over explaining. I feel like I'm dragging ass going to... Okay. Okay. I gotta get, I gotta get some kind of stream deck or some kind of whatever hooked up here because my neck's starting to hurt <laughs> just from <laughs> uh, looking back and forth.
sweaty all the time. I think part of the challenge with me all the time is working through the more mundane uh, parts of drawing and trying to figure out ways to imply things without, uh, I don't know, uh, having to really draw everything out like crazy. Like these ice cubes that I gotta draw inside this, uh, the roach coach, inside the actual uh, thing.
I've done a lot of research today on uh, just like how YouTube works now. Cause I like, uh, hell yeah, dude. Welcome, welcome, Alex. But I, I, I was really, uh, I don't know. When I get excited about things, I, I really, I do a lot of research in them, and I, I uh, want to see things grow, and I want to expand them, you know. And it's happened with most things that I do, in that I just. Uh, I get. I think I get ahead of myself, and uh, you know, there's all things about analytics and marketing, SEO, and video optimization. And I'm just like, like at a certain point, I just get lost because I'm like, oh yeah, I, I forgot that I'm really just doing this just to create my own little thing, you know. And it's like I, I always get ahead of myself just like trying to expand and trying to just like make things grow uh, and it becomes it starts to feel not organic to me then I have to I feel like I have to stop or just like rethink things and I don't know but you know I, I also realize a lot of the things that like because I feel like one everybody's a scammer I think that's just one thing that there's like almost like some like reality of it that they're not that they're leaving out about just like, I don't know, like what, what if you're not just like, I don't know, have like a business oriented mind of like trying to solve a problem for people or, you know, you're not, you're doing something sort of niche, you know, like what about those people? Does, does, does marketing SEO work for that as well? Am I a fucking idiot? I don't know. But I just, I realized that it's like, yeah, I, I just got to do this and just be my most genuine self. And like, I don't, I don't know, I don't need, to, I'm not, the goal is not to be a YouTuber, you know, the goal here is, you know, if, you know, obviously, like, I have a blast doing the stream, you know, and if I could just have, like, a communal sort of thing based around my work, then that's really what I want, you know, I want to be able to just, like, I don't know, I, I, I'm sick of, like, mystery in things, I feel like every, everybody's trying to be, like, mysterious and fabricate almost like like what they want you to see especially with their content and like I don't know I feel like with my art like a lot of a lot of it, the experience is just my work ethic more than anything like I feel like that just shows in what I do uh, and there's just uh, there's just a volume because I just give a shit about what I'm doing you know oh, did I fuck with the white balance on that You know, the goal is to be an artist, obviously. You know, if I could use social media and, and the internet as a tool, then obviously, you know, me and everybody else in the fucking world, I guess. But I just realized that I just have to have fun with this and just let it grow organically. Stop trying to optimize everything, you know. It's a very it's very easy to fall in that trap when you get excited. And it's like I definitely want to upgrade my setup. I definitely want to be able to uh what's it called? I wanna be able to make this quality for the people that give a shit, you know, and I also love uh like like just Upgrading. I love camera gear. I love. Uh, I just love even just having like this little studio, you know, um, set up. And almost, I almost just like I have my own little broadcast uh, TV station. You know, uh, kind of it t tickles a lot of uh, fancies that I have. It scratches a lot of itches. Um, but yeah, I, I want to upgrade it so it's quality for you know the people that really do enjoy it, and so that everything is legible. And just fun. Like, I feel like it'd be fun to have a stream deck and have a whole bunch of buttons. Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, I, well, one, it's sick to see 
a good crowd of burger heads chilling uh, every now and then. Um, because yeah, honestly, like uh, the last couple, I feel like the last couple streams I've done, you know, the numbers have gone up just like in increments of five or ten of people watching, and that's really exciting to me because you know, in my research when I really was starting to get into this whole thing, um, basically they were saying like, hey, expect the stream to nobody, and I sort of have like, I won't say built-in following, but I've been doing music a long time, and I, I have, you know, people that just support me. Uh, and, so, and just like the things that I do. Um, so, you know, I was surprised to see the amount of people that actually did turn out and did interact and still do interact. You know, it's really cool. But also, uh, making Halo videos just for fun and, and making, getting to 50K, that's crazy. I remember fucking when Halo 3 came out. Well, I remember, I mean, I remember like Halo was out. I went, like, went before, like, video games were really on my radar. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, yes, sneaking that past me without giving me one. What do you want? You want a Kit Kat? What do you got? You got a Kit Kat and Reese's. I'm getting a, give me a Reese's. But uh, I remember Halo 2 came out. That was pretty much the entire year of, of just hanging out with my friends, just playing Halo 2 in my friend's basement. And then when fucking Halo 3 came out, the same thing happened, but I feel like for like three years. But that was just like pretty much the only video game we played. GTA 4 and GTA 5 were definitely competition, but I don't think anything came close to like, we, we, would, we would just be in a basement screaming playing Halo 2 and Halo 3 for hours. There's another one, <clears throat> there's another one that I'm thinking of that, um, you know, I, I that we used to play a lot. I, I think it was Guitar Hero, uh, the Guitar Hero Three, because um, that had like Dragon Force and shit on it. And it was awesome. I miss playing video games. I was never good at video games, but I always just like playing. I like I like just sort of that uh, mindless. I guess not mindless, but sort of that. You can kind of shut off and just, just focus on playing a video game, you know? And it's like peak relaxation. Until, I mean, I used to, I used to fucking get so pissed off with my video games. You, might, you can ask my mom. I'd be like screaming and crying. <laughs> well, I remember in, in, in Melee, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Gears of War. I was never a big Gears of War head. I just never had like access to it. Like, I never had it. Uh, but a lot of my friends liked it. Um, but I remember I was playing Melee one time, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and I guess in order to unlock Falco, um, you needed to defeat like ninety nine warriors at a certain difficulty, or a hundred warriors. And I think I like defeated ninety nine of them. I had one more to go, and I died. And my mom said I was like inconsolable for like twenty minutes. So there is a that when I used to miss Samurai Jack or Dragon Ball Z after school, that was like, you know, I had my little things, you know. crack my back crack that's a good crack yeah man that that's pretty much top tier tv for me in general I, like honestly my go-to samurai jack dragon ball z and avatar last airbender uh because they have most of those in some way shape or form on dvd 
Uh, is there anything else? What else do I watch? If I even when I do watch TV, Seinfeld. I <laughs> think. But I guess I guess get back to what I'm saying. I really would like if I'm gonna. I, I've decided that if I'm really gonna make any sort of home or bed in any kind of social media, I think YouTube is the one. I feel like it's the most creatively free. Um, I feel like you know there's just there's just a lot of growing you can do also, and I guess that kind of goes against what I was saying. But you know, ideally, you know, I would like this to grow. I just don't. I don't want to be doing it at such a rate where like I'm not having fun. But I guess what I'm getting at here is that I, I enjoy YouTube. And I, I, I think that for an artist, and especially some like you know people who are capable of really making quality stuff and being sort of multifaceted, I think it's a great place. You know, I know every every site has its issues. You know, I, I see a lot of stuff popping up um, with uh, people having issues with YouTube, but. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm not really at that point where I probably should be commenting on that at all or whatever. But, you know, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is that no place is perfect. I mean, Instagram is like that started as a place where a lot of artists got their start. And now it's just like even those artists are getting fucked over all the time. Uh, you know, I think I, I, I started drawing really at the tail end of that. And I thought that maybe I could sort of make my way in there. Like, I would always try and engage with the Craig Gleasons and the uh, Lifeform uh, people. And, you know, never really worked out because I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? He's drawing so I can stop talking to me. Because <laughs> at the time, my drawings, my drawings were very inspired, but they were not great. I had a lot to learn. I was reading, reading the comments. Yeah, you know, I definitely feel like a lot of uh, social media places have, especially since being bought out by, by a bigger company, have just kind of gone into the, the pooper. But, um, you know, for me, where it's just like, I, I really want to be in the business of creating and putting it out and letting it go, I feel like it's pr a pretty good place for me, you know. It's a place that's not really exactly going to cut my reach, as far as I know. Like, at least not to the caliber that Instagram or, like, Facebook does, you know. Not that I'm on Facebook, but I remember when they first started um, enforcing those rules uh, about... You know, like cutting people's reach to, to pay for reach, especially on pages and stuff. And I mean, this is like extortion. This is crazy. Little did I know it would only get worse. And that was my first mistake. What do they have here? Okay.
I'm doing a lot of food truck, uh, I guess, menu items from memory right now. And uh, let me see if I can turn that over. That should be good. But I'm trying to remember for like from like draw a bunch of food truck items from memory. Like there's always those trays of like pupusa and like shit like that. And like sausage egg and cheeses and things. But I don't remember if that I think it's in like the there's like the back portion that had all like the coffee and the the, the world's worst coffee, by the way. I remember I used to, um, if I, like when I ha was, I had a job driving vans in the city and, uh, there would be days where, like, like, usually I would, I would stop off at Starbucks before my deliveries and usually I had deliveries every day, but there'd be days where I didn't have any deliveries and I couldn't go out and do that because I wouldn't wake up early enough to go. To, I, actually, I don't even think when I would, would have to be up early enough, Starbucks would be open so uh, there would be times I'd have to get coffee off the food truck, and it was like fucking rusty water. It was just disgusting. And I remember, like, like, I'm not picky about my coffee, especially shitty coffee, but it really just needs to be kind of bitter. And for me to be complaining, it's fucked up. You know, it just sucks. There's not room on my table to put my iPad. Yeah, the, there's definitely, you know, like I, I've been trying to give 7 Eleven a coffee, 7 Seven Eleven a coffee, 7 Eleven coffee a chance, and every time I feel like. I, I can't even tell you. It goes like up into my sinuses. It's so nasty. And a lot of people swear by 7-Eleven coffee. Like hot 7-Eleven coffee is not bad. But iced coffee, I said, I don't know what the fuck they do to that shit. But that is, it's like motor oil, diarrhea water. I think I'm going to get like a chat feature going up on the side as well. Um, I think that'd be cool. Just so uh, everyone can see the chat and see that I'm not just uh, talking to myself or talking to people and not being able to. Uh, you know what the fuck I'm trying to do. Actually, oh, I think I could look on my iPad. Yeah, I'm sure you guys got good ass coffee. Gas station coffee, I don't mind. There's like a the only time I ever really have like Wawa, or Quick Check, Quick Checker sheets or anything like that, which is like up in the Northeast. I think they have them 
all up the south too, at least while on sheets. Um, one one thing that uh, was it like I I just think about that like fucking being so tired and then drinking coffee and then being so nauseous like like just like the coffee just making it worse. Um, so I, that that's like I don't know. Gas station coffee always just brings up that weird feeling in me. I'm like ugh. But I'll drink it. That's the bottom line. Okay, I was just going through my iPad just to, and I'm going through the video of when I uh, inked the, the page before this because I couldn't remember what the characters, uh, the background characters looked like. I think, okay, so there's only two. Uh, so I guess I have to draw two and then make up one. Or you know what, maybe I'll even, I'll just... This is, uh, w one thing I learned in cartooning is that, uh, the, the, the secret to cartooning is what you don't see. And there's definitely a bit of illusion that takes place that just gets your mind thinking, oh, well, that's there, even if it's not really there. That's what, like, all, like, foreshortening is and all kind of shit like that. I had a guy named John Fabricant. That was my teacher at Suffolk. That was what he, uh, that was his trick. He said, you know, cartooning is all about what you don't see. How much can you put in there without really having to go crazy? What does this guy's nose look like? Okay, it's a fat nose. And we have sort of an Amish janitor looking kind of guy. Probably just keep that open. Maybe I can make some more over here. Buzzy. Buzzy. Black mustache, and just some kind of dad hair. And the other guy is just okay. I really like this comic because it really it, it gives me 
gives me an opportunity to express a lot of these funny characters I've met over my time doing construction. And I can just kind of draw all these little tiny things that I've noticed. I mean, they're all, like, they all have man boobs. They're all balding. They're all, I don't know. Just pretty dumb looking, to be honest. <laughs> Which I'm, I don't know. I met some, I met some pretty good, smart people working construction. Not many, but a good amount. I think once I have like another, well this, the last page I want to clean that up, finish it up, I'm going to finish this page, and then I'm going to finish one more page, and then I'm going to start consistently posting again. Because I really, would, like, I, I have a couple other projects in the works, um, a collaborative stuff, so I want to get this done, I want to, I want it out of my head. Um, so that I can work on those. But I also just, I just like having things done in a timely manner, you know? Yeah, that guy, he eats three gas station hot dogs a day with a monster and wonders why, like, his blood pressure is all fucked up and his heart's fucked up. And he's got all these crazy problems. But he'll also, like, outlift, like, anybody somehow. Probably divorced. <laughs> Yeah, and that guy's always farting. I knew a guy, I used to work with a dude that would get mad at me for being late, but then would like chain smoke about like seven times an hour. 
and I would just get, I would be like, well, let's, let's stack up your smoke breaks uh, uh, against the, the time that you arrive here, and, and you'd probably be about two hours later than me. It's always, it's always amazing to me that, like, cigarettes are, like, prioritized. Like, you can, you can take a cigarette break. Like, what the fuck? How? You can take a cigarette break, but you can't stop for five minutes to, um, I don't know, just relax. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get it. I really don't understand. Like, why is that the thing that we can take a break for? Uh, the world's weird. All right, so the next, I know I kind of jumped the gun on this one. So basically he opens the truck. Someone asks, hey, because uh, cause there's a little monologue uh, on the first four pages. He asks, hey, like, hey, Rochi, who are you talking to? And he makes sort of a dad joke in, like, oh, like the last voice in my head that'll listen. And then... I have to draw, uh, the next panel is this guy loses his mind at that joke while holding a buttered roll. And then I think it goes into the guy painting him and then another guy walking into frame and making some kind of dad joke. Dads love thinking they're like the craziest person on earth. Like, oh, I'm a sicko, I'm a fucking sicko. It's like, maybe not. I have a 401k and benefits. I'm going to make his hairs uh, stand straight up while he's laughing.
Same here. I gotta learn. I like try and be patient. Just like I just want books done. Just so I can have the book. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Keith, what's going on, brother? Welcome back. Glad to keep coming back. What are you working on? I need to make a post about just like my booking stuff. Because it's almost September and that's the next booking cycle I have coming up. Oh, yeah. The only thing is, I have three dates available <laughs> in my next two month block of booking. It's pretty good. Yeah, but I feel bad for all the people who've been waiting. 
That's true. Well, you know they're real ones if they just keep waiting. Yeah. Right? Because the way I see it, whether I book them now or in two months from now, the chances of when they'll get their appointment will be the same time. Yeah. You know? But at least when I book them, I can make sure I can book them consecutive appointments so they're not sitting with half an outline or half a tattoo done for months at a time. Yeah. You know, because there's like too many new appointments in between. I hope that's fair. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. I mean, also, do you really have an option to have a choice? I mean, my option would be to just not have the two-month, you know, segments. Yeah, but that's for your schedule, you know. Like that's that's for your that's for my sanity. Sanity. That's that's what I meant to say. Yeah. It's not like I have people banging down the door, but you know, I'm very fortunate to be busy enough. That I have a problem with this. I was going to say, definitely, problem. it's a good problem to have, but I could, it is stressful, you know. Just trying to. You know, I think sure. having it and also trying to make it like clear in a way where it's like understandable and like reasonable. Yeah. And not like confusing. Mm hmm. Because I feel like when people email me and I'm like, okay, great. Like, I'm going to be booking for October and November, the first week of September. So if you just want to leave me, <laughs> it's like a fucking riddle. <laughs> I'm trying to think of, like, a very simple way to explain it. Did you get a glass of water? Yes. Might be water, water person. I might be what? Water person today. It's the drinking cup. Now I'm I'm confused about how, where to put this. Uh, you know, actually, maybe I'll maybe I'll put it. I have an idea. This could be cool. That chicken was that salty. No. I'm always so dehydrated. Well, did you drink water at all today? Yeah, I tried, I drank a good amount. I had a couple big glasses. And and I had the liquid IV. Oh, did you? Yeah. Hmm. We did sweat a lot. That is get true. That fucking AC unit yeah, that was a nightmare. I have a cool idea now, so this is what I'm going to do. Awesome. All right, that looks really good. One thing I did achieve that I'm pretty excited about is over a hundred hours of watch time since I've been doing this. So that's pretty cool. Hours, hours of watch time. I've had this channel for a pretty long time and I, I was going pretty hard during the pandemic with it. And then uh, my camera broke and then I think altogether I just ran out of ideas. <laughs> Uh, and I've tried to like revamp it here and there, but um, I guess with doing this and just sort of allowing myself to be myself, 
uh, I think I think I've uh, you know, even if I haven't struck gold, I struck on something that just I I, I enjoy coming back to every couple of days. Ugh. Refreshing. Okay. And then Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll I'll work that in later. Whenever I go to draw roach, I always have to remember I start with his glasses. Sucked in. I am. I came with you to be productive. Babe, you're embarrassing me for a brother. <laughs> you have to be productive. <laughs>
I really love drawing Roach because in a lot of ways he's like me in that at, from the right angle you catch him looking pretty porky. Really, really excited about this John movie show coming up. A lot of people have been really pushing me in that direction, which is cool. Everyone's like, they tell me all the time, like, oh, I really like John movie. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> and, you know, I, I thought, I didn't think we'd have any opportunities to play shows because I really didn't know how it would be received at all. But, Golden Hour booking pulled through, and this is the second time they asked us to play a show. I'd like to play more shows with John Movie. Singing and playing guitar is fun. It's a it's a fun process. It's just you know it's a little it's kind of awkward because like you know with drums you're making a fucking crazy ass noise. So there's a lot to like supplement for like how you're feeling. You're really too with it. Where it's like guitar, I feel like no matter how how loud you play, you don't like get feel the same energy it's not like pulsing to the rest of your body not like even like doing vocals where you're just like running around like a maniac and, and you know doing all that like guitar it's like you, know, you have this thing that makes loud noise but it's almost like you know I don't know there's not that same I, I, dare I say like pain or resistance I, I, was, I was actually telling Brittany about this the other day I'm like performing is painful at least how I do it. I don't know if anyone else has this, uh, you know, sort of scope on things, but performing is like like doing vocals. You're jumping around. You're tired. Your diaphragm hurts. Your throat hurts. You know, it, it's it's pain. Playing drums, you're whacking, sh whacking. I was gonna say hard shit. <laughs> so you're whacking metal with a bunch of hard pieces of wood. <laughs> Really not making it better for myself, but what I'm saying is that you're just hitting hard shit with hard shit, and all that vibration is is passing through you. You're out of breath, you know. It's crazy. 
But guitar, I feel like there's really not much of that. Unless you're like doing your escape plan or something where you're just like throwing your shit around. It's crazy. You know, it's a new experience for me to just be able to be like, oh wow, like I can kind of just enjoy this. <laughs> there's not this pain that I'm buying into, you know? like this, it's all the money. Yo, Alex, thanks for, thanks for fucking showing up. Thanks for talking. Appreciate it. Have a good day at work. Get yourself some premium gas station coffee. Try to have a good day. Stay away from the guys that eat beans and fucking drink Mountain Dew. Don't breathe in their, their butt. Smell. done penciling. Oh, oh, how could I forget? How could I fucking forget? That would have been a crucial part that I missed. Oh, man. I'm sorry, but sorry for that. R.I.P. to that guy. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you know, I said the thing about beans and Mountain Dew. He goes, oh, the guy who ate beans and Mountain Dew passed away during COVID. Crazy stuff.
Okay. It's gonna be screen time. All right, I think I'm ready to start inking. Oof, I think I need a standing break. Yeah, dude, they might be kindred spirits of some kind. Cause that sounds like some Mark shit. I'll let you in on a little story. We actually had a, a gallon of piss. I, I on, on our first tour back after COVID, uh, I filled a gallon of, like, with my piss in the van because I was drinking a lot of water. And Mark kept it up until about straight up, like, a month or two ago. It was just in his car. We called it piss mo, like Gus mo. So Mark is definitely a, a garbage legend. Uh, I'm going to pee real quick. So I'll be right back and then I'm going to start inking. important on my phone. Yeah. I lied. <laughs> I lied. All right. Okay. Do you want the charger back? No, no, I just, I wanted to forget what I, I think I just wanted to charge it just so it didn't die. <laughs> but it's, it's good enough and I'm not using it at the moment, so. All right. Let me see if I can, yeah, just balance this light out a little more. Yeah, that works a lot better. Okay, cool. So yeah, we got our pencil of roach opening up the food truck at the first job site um, after monologue, having, you know, kind of one of the guys uh, be like, hey, Roach, who are you talking to? Then the guy's walking into frame, and you got all the people in the back waiting to get to the food truck on top of all the goodies that are inside the food, cr food truck sitting on ice. Uh, tells his dad joke. Construction guy starts laughing, like, ha, ha, ha. I don't know if you noticed his... Uh, his hair standing up, uh, I guess this is a part of his expression, then paying for his buttered roll and walking out of the frame and having another uh, dad kind of guy uh, make a joke or something. It'll make sense, trust me. Okay. First off, we're gonna do what we always do. Ow. really hurting his micron. Let's see if we can get a better one. Okay. 
I have this bad habit of not throwing out microns. That's a little better. I'm going to get my speech bubbles out of the way because I can feel my hands today and they are not going the way I want them to. Right.
So I think the next time I stream will probably be Friday, if, if space allows me. I will confirm, but I'm working tomorrow all day and Thursday all day uh, at a venue, so can't really do it, but I'm definitely I'm going to make an attempt to at least do one more this week. I think Friday is the only day I could realistically do that. But I am working on, I've been kind of videotaping little bits and pieces of my uh, day and all the creativity that happens throughout. Um, and I've been kind of compiling it into vlogs. I was doing that for, uh... oh, oh yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I agree. Though I will say, I think I need I think I need a tea break from coffee. I totally I, I saw what you said, Keith. I just totally uh, did a 180. <laughs> but um, I, I'm at a point right now where like I'm I'm housing up just a regular size iced coffee, so I feel like I have to I have to take a break or something. But I do love coffee. Coffee is really one of my favorite things on earth. Um, but what was I talking about? What was I talking about? Do you remember Brittany? What? Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> um, I heard that you were going to be streaming Friday. I'm going to be streaming Friday. I didn't hear what happened after. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. That was crazy. <laughs> It'll come to me. Oh, I was talking about the blog thing. So I was doing that format for a second, but I kind of lost interest in it. Uh, and I think, like I said, overall, I was just really trying to crank out way too much content at one time. And I even fucking hate the word content, but it's really what it was. So I, don't, I'm, I guess I'm okay with... I was trying to make art and also run a fucking uh, art business. You know, so I lost interest in it pretty quickly. Uh, and I kind of lost steam with it because I was doing a lot, but I don't know. Uh, it just happened that, I don't know, not a lot of people watching it either. And I was just like, yeah, you know, who, who am I doing this for at the end of the day? Am I even doing it for, do I even like doing this? So I stopped, but I realized that now, especially since I'm unemployed, there's a lot uh, of stuff still that uh, I do, that I think is worth documenting. I think it's worth documenting, and that's the most important part. And I said, doing this, doing this live stream has really revitalized my approach to the internet, uh, especially being an artist on the internet. And a lot of people recommend that YouTube is pretty much the place you go as an artist, because there's a lot more room to grow, there's a lot of uh, room to edit, because oftentimes with like Instagram and and TikTok and things like that. Once, once that post is up, that's it. You know, where YouTube you have uh, tweakability, which is great. You know, those are those are the pros I think of that. And the cons I'll find out if I really ever really start taking this seriously. But like I, I think more the point of this is to just use it as a tool. A fun tool at like that. You know, just give pe people a place where, you know, they can come and actually just like see what I do instead of like trying to do it on Instagram, trying to get the, get all that shit going, and just ultimately having it fall short because of a lot of different reasons, but. I really want YouTube to be more or less my my uh, my home my home based. Oh, Aha Seltzers are fucking awesome. I haven't had the caffeinated ones, but they're they're good ass seltzers. What's what's the uh, prebiotic soda? Um, poppy. Pop. Yes, Poppy. Is it Poppy? Mm -hmm. I think yeah, it is. Po poopy. Yeah, because I thought it was Poopy. <laughs> um.
But yeah, Poppy's awesome. Aha's awesome. I mean, even like the Whole Foods brand seltzer, I really enjoy. I go through those like water. I love seltzer. Is that annoying? No, it's just funny. Okay. It's like beep up, beep up, beep 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 up. <laughs> so I was gonna say I can turn it down if you need. It's on here. putting down some lines but not as not as good as I'd like oh I cannot wait to sleep tonight baby me too it's gonna be so nice Kitties aren't cold. Probably not. I think they, they were like frying today. Were they? They were all like so like lethargic. Just yeah. like laying on the floor. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. Aw. Oh, it's so good. I hope they'll be comfortable now. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't publicly say, oh, the kitties were frying. <laughs> While I'm doing this, I gotta plan out that flyer just in my brain. So one thing I'm trying to do with this stream is have it grow like organically. You know, I'm trying to I don't know, just like word of mouth spread stuff and 
just overall, you know, just have it be communal, you know, is, and I, I, this is, I want this to be something where people join in and talk and have dialogue and, you know. What? What? Why'd you say? <laughs> I said talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, off, like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't want, I won't, I don't want that to become a lost thing of, you know, people only knowing how to spread the word through social media and, you know, just whatever stupid flavor of the week there is, you know. So I gotta make flyers because I'm gonna have a table at uh, an art show tomorrow. And then I'll also be, uh, I'll also be uh, probably having some form of a table at that hardcore flea market that's going on in Worcester um, this weekend. But I'll probably just have stuff on Age of Apocalypse's table. Cause I'm going there with Terry. Which is exciting. I love hanging out with those guys. Great guys. One thing I, I'm really like enjoying doing is using like like cross hatching and scratches to like represent less important things or far away things. I feel like it's a, it adds like a really cool artistic, uh, mysterious, dark sort of uh, look to it. Or a more, I don't want to say mysterious, because I said about an hour ago that I hate mystery. But a more uh, mature look. Yeah, let, def definitely, let's hang out. We'll fucking, we'll uh, hang out. <laughs> I think I'm going to change it up for a second and use the brush for a close-up of this guy. Also because, like I said, I feel like I'm not getting the uh, smooth smoothness that I, I usually get from my uh, dip pen. My head in the way. Is my head in the way doing that. No. What about here? No. Okay, good. 
I mean, it blocks some, but not what you're working on. All right, good. They all start whistling <laughs> instead of music. Maybe we'll probably find a way to copyright playing. Oh, this is, is going to end up being a long one. What time is it? 11.18. Okay. I don't see this going till midnight. Because I'm, I'm laying down the foundations now. And this is, I have a couple little things to do. But... I do have work tomorrow, so...
Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my uh, microns here. Oof. So, you know, let me let my ink dry for like two seconds. And then I'll get back to the microns. Whew. Okay. It's up to you. What, what happened? I'm just trying to think of how to work this. And if it sounds like I'm shooting myself in the foot a little bit. Oh, yeah. Can I explain? Yeah. So, I'm trying to phrase this in a way. Because I have very limited time available in my next two month increment, right? Yes. So I'm trying to explain that I'm booking new custom designs in two month increments to ensure that these projects can be completed in a timely fashion. Because each new project gets two to four sessions, consecutive sessions, two to three weeks apart. Yeah. That being said, it'll go beyond the two months that I'm booking for. And therefore, it leaves very few appointments available for the first of new projects. You follow? Yeah. So, because I don't want to ever kind of frame it in a way of like my books are closed. Yeah. Because they're not closed so much as they are delayed. Now, like, how how lenient can you be? Like, is there any way you could be like, listen, if I have any availability, I'll let the, obviously, well, the first of you know. That's what I'm thinking of, like, because I've spoken to a couple different artists, and they're just like, yeah, I don't keep a running list. I just tell people when I have the time available, if you're wanting to book with me, like, send me your information while I'm booking. Yeah. Hmm. But know. those are people who also have their books closed until they open them. And I don't know. I just... Something feels really, like, inaccessible with, like, saying my books are closed. But at the same time, I feel like this two-month increment thing and being so limited in when I'm actually taking appointments now, at a time at least, feels almost just as inaccessible. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess that, I mean... But I'm also trying to have some leniency with my own schedule because just with running the business and the events that we do, you know, like, even all the events we planned for this year, I had to reschedule so many people. And, you know, it's people who reach out five months in advance to then have to be rescheduled three months after they finally got their appointment. Yeah. It just feels like, I don't know, so never ending as far as like them getting to their appointment finally, you know? And I just feel like if I could have it in like a two month increment, then at least if someone needs to be rescheduled, well, they're really only being rescheduled like two at tops, three months out. Yeah. yeah I'm trying to think of how you could word that. But it doesn't sound so like, oh, I'm so busy, so half of you who want to get tattooed probably won't get in with this cycle because I'm just too busy. Like, it's not what I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. say. If anyone's got some advice over there. Yeah, if, if, if anyone wants to weigh in on this, be our guest. The intention is to not be a slave to my career so much anymore. Yeah. Uh, and have the ability to kind of have some flexibility in my schedule on both ends. You know, like, my appointment today ended up getting COVID, so he had to reschedule. 
I don't really know what I'm rescheduling him for because that's going to take one of the three days I have available in the next two months. Next three months, really. Yeah. September's booked. I'm trying to think, like, how could you put that where it's like, I mean, I guess either way, either way you slice it, it is going to be sort of inaccessible. Right. You know, so I think you might just have to accept that. Because if I book everyone now, in whatever allotted times that I could, then I'll be booking into like, you know, May. Yeah. What if come May... Something comes up, you know, like, I don't know. I guess it just, being booked as far in advance as I have been, it just proven to be more stressful than not. Because then I have an obligation, I feel, you know, with my migraines and whatever else could come up. If I have to reschedule somebody, I feel bad for rescheduling them so far out in advance. So I'll either work on my day off. Or I'll overbook myself for a day for the sake of compensating. But it's not like, I don't know, just some normal shift kind of work. I'm marking these people permanently. Yeah, you gotta have to be present doing that. Yeah, I, you know, like that's the whole point of being here. Hmm. So. I want to be fair about it to both the clients and myself, but I also don't want to seem like it's impossible to actually book with me. Well, which I understand why people do the books closed cycle. So they're not, cause this is what happens is people email me in between so I let them know, like, oh, hey, I'm going to be taking on new projects for October and November in the beginning of September. So leave me your information. If you want to be booked then, just let me know. And when the time comes, I'll call and get you in. Now the time has come, and I don't have nearly enough spaces for the amount of people I have who have reached out in between the last time I booked and now. So the people who, like close their books, tell people, okay, if you want to book with me for this next grouping of times that I'm trying to book for, email me during this allotted time. Yeah. But then that also feels a little inaccessible because they'll be like, oh, my books are open for 24 hours. And it's like, what if someone's just fucking busy that day? They miss their chance. Well, I, I think people do a lot of that for like vanity purposes too. Like right. To, to, like, to look like they're so... But fucking, they're so busy. Like, yeah. But, but that... I mean, that's like understandable because I think that's almost... in. That's why people want to book with them eventually is because there is this mystery or exclusivity behind then, it. Like, the last call list that I had... And granted, this was a call list that was building up from you know, before the new year, because it was during that time I was like, all right, I need to put a pause on everything and figure out how I want to go about yeah. scheduling myself, but I, th I think some of these anything. people, like, just went somewhere else, you know, like, yeah. when I, you called them and finally booked, they're like, oh, I actually got tattooed already, never mind. Yeah. Which, like, I don't blame them. They don't want to wait, they don't want to wait, but... I think that maybe you gotta lose the inaccessibility thought because yeah. it's it's sort of inevitable That's true. in one way or another. Like someone's gonna get I don't want to say slighted or gypped, but you know it's just I'm just gonna miss out. I guess. It's bound to happen. You know that if there's enough people that you know there's there's a line to get in there. You know and you have a capacity. You know someone's going to have to end up waiting, you know, or yeah. a lot of people. And, you know, I think the worry should start when people stop waiting. You know, if there's, a, if, if there's still a, a constant buildup of people, like, oh, and, you, and you're, at, you're not having issues booking shit out. In fact, you have the opposite problem. I would just 
do shit the way you do it and not think about it, you know? So, in my explanation, I'm just kind of saying I, I'm booking new custom designs and two-month increments to ensure that these projects can be comp completed in a timely fashion. Each new project, there are two to four consecutive sessions booked, two to three weeks apart. I was going to say, that being said, each two-month cycle of new projects leaves me with very limited time or space. Yeah. If you're someone who's currently waiting to be called, like I assure you I will reach out to everybody. However, most likely I will be booking you for December. Yeah. Uh, yeah, December, January. I think if anything, like, I think that's good. I think that's, that's good. Just basically say, like, I will, will be getting in touch. I will be reaching out shortly. Yeah. You know? Because I... Because I feel like what, what would... If it's, like, super ambiguous, you know, just be like, hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to start booking out shortly. Like, just, just give them an idea that you are working on it. Mm -hmm. You know, just be transparent, if anything. It's like, if and people I, have to wait, then they have to wait, you know? Yeah, that's true. Because also, too, like, yeah, if I... If I were to book them now for those for December, January, then okay, if I book up December fully now, what if, you know, Jack sometimes comes home for the holidays, not on the holidays because yeah. of his work schedule. You, you I mean you but, want you don't want to be a slave to tattoos. You want you want autonomy. You know, so that's that's perfectly normal. But, but that, I've sold I, my soul to this industry for seven years already. Yeah, well, nine actually. I nine. think if anything, like I said, I, I think that be transparent and kind of be firm and just you know, if anyone has a problem with it, I don't think I don't think anybody is gonna have a problem, especially if they've already been waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of like you know, you you you, you just wait your turn. Yeah. You know, it's kind of also just kind of flies by before you know it. That's true. So I, I would just I would make note that you are in the process of calling people, so just be patient. You know. Yeah, like right now on my schedule, realistically, like even December. Well, let me see this. I have five days open in December already. Wow. You know, like... And that's all just, like, rollover and, like, like yeah. second sessions and shit? I mean, I have even appointments going into... Well, is that what's kind of fucking it up, is, like, the second sessions and, and, uh, well, and that's rescheduling? Why I'm trying to explain, like, the reason that these two-month increments have such limited space is because... A lot of these projects need multiple sessions. So with those multiple sessions, being that they have to be at least two weeks apart for it to heal, ideally three, you know, that's like a session a month. Mm -hmm. If I have 20 projects and they each have three sessions. Well, do you know, how, about you, how about you just explain exactly that? Listen, like when I started booking out in two month increments, I didn't factor in the fact that there would be rollover from second sessions and yeah, things like true. that. So I, I do have very limited availability in the next booking cycle, uh, but please be patient. I will be, you know, Everyone if, if you want to be, be contacted, you know, like I'm not yeah. leaving anyone hanging, but it is, and like I think. I guess maybe that's more what I'm trying to figure out if I should have a little bit of a disclaimer of like, because then at the same time, it's like I have the second late appointments that I have opened, like the two hour sessions, and that's trying to compensate for if someone needs to be rescheduled or if someone needs to, you know, have like another session that we didn't account for. Yeah. There's like a little two month, a uh, two hour block that we could squeeze them in for. Or for 
the flash that I'm trying to push because I want to be pushing more of my own designs. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, hate is to it be booking for flash designs and there are people who are like on the call list, like, hey. Is it also like imperative that you make an announcement that uh, about your booking? No, but I realized that the highlight like section I have as far as the information for booking, it's not very well defined. I, would, and I wanted to like just kind of like rewrite it. I would honestly. Uh, or I feel like almost having it all written out could be a deterrent because people read that and go, oh, well, that's going to be but, annoying. Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. I feel like maybe you should just explain that to people individually when they do inquire. Say, like, my books are open for, you know. I'm always accepting inquiries. Yeah. Um, but just say you're, you're booked to shit. You're booked out. You know. I'm booked out to an extent that I feel comfortable being. Because also, too, like, this year coming up, I want to plan a lot of guest spots. Yeah. You know? And I'd like to space them out well enough so where I'm not gone all the time. And also, you know, if a certain shot can only take me for like a certain week during a month, I don't want to do books that week. Yeah. You know, and have to shuffle all these people around constantly. I guess I think that would probably be your best route. Like, it's just like... You don't have to make like a public announcement because I feel like that's where you kind of end up getting stuck a bit. Yeah. Is because the fact that you know the the way you're reaching out to people or letting them know how to book you is something that's new to you and it still has like kinks to be worked out, you know. Because then the part of me is like, well, why don't I just book like December as well? But then December actually books into January, February. Yeah. February, we're supposed to be having that big show that we haven't really nailed down a date for. You know, like, there's going to be prep days that need to be yeah. accounted for for that. There's just a lot so that I, I, hasn't been solidified that I don't want other people to then have to deal with. Because yeah, well, well that's, that's where I think, like I said, I think that you don't have to be that transparent mm -hmm. uh, to a point where you're making an out like, oh, oh, like, shit, like... Just explain to people when they email you and reach out, like, listen, I'm booking for the next two months. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, be because of the fact that I do have a lot of rollover, uh, I do have very limited availability, so I will get you in as soon as humanly possible. I'll just give them the date. Yeah. You know, instead of, instead of being like, you know, like, I don't know having someone else book it or, or whatever, or just put it wherever there's an available slot, you know? I think that would also give you an opportunity to um, establish a little more of a rapport with, you know, people personally, you know? Yeah, that's true. Just by, pers like, working with them to make a date. As long as you make an effort to, I don't think anyone's gonna give a shit. Yeah, that's fair. You know? It's like, oh, that sucks, I gotta wait, but you know, it's not like you're they're waiting for food or to breathe air. You're getting tattooed, they understand it's like a luxury, you know. It's like a fashion thing. And I think people surprisingly when it comes to stuff like this after COVID are a little more patient. Yeah. Because we we couldn't do it for so long, you know? I was like with a lot of like records and stuff that were going on. Like people, people were just ordering the records because they they wanted them and they didn't care really when they came out. I'm sure some people gave some people shit, but for the most part, I think that it wasn't too big a deal. Yeah, I, I would maybe just go out and say, hey, look, booking for, what is it, December, January, or well, November? Well, so I said, I already made one little post, and I just said I wanted to make a couple of announcements about my next booking cycle coming up and update the booking highlight. I have very limited dates, open in October, 
and November for new custom projects. So I'm saying for, for, for everyone who has emailed and is waiting on a call, you should expect to hear from us in the next week or two. If I'm unable to get you booked for October and November, you will be first on the list for December and January. Yeah, it works. And then leave the explanation of all that there. And yeah. then I'm going to just update, like, for people who are looking to book with me, I'll have a whole separate thing. Because I feel like the way I worded it last time, I rushed through it, and it's just a little, like, half descriptive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think that works. Like I said, just don't leave anything super open-ended. Just, like, if the reality is that people have to wait, then they have to wait. Yeah, that's true. You know? And that's what we do here on the Cult of the Burgers <laughs> live stream. Artist, our artist, consultant, consulting, getting out of pickles, getting out of binds. How to be a, uh, a fair-minded... What's the word? <laughs> <laughs> How to be a firm... <laughs> I'm just over here like <laughs> yeah. um, service artist yeah a fair minded service artist custom artist yeah Oof. oh my friggin neck is killing me Ooh, 244 already. Wow, that's crazy. What? The amount of time I've been streaming. Oh. I thought you meant in the morning for a second. I'm like, are you kidding me? funny I do these X's to like for the effect of like that diamondy rough pattern the square pattern on uh on like the side of a food truck I think it kind of gets the point across I could probably take more time but I'm not gonna it's not the point of what I do you know Some of these lines. Okay. okay, I think the next most important part is to fill in all the really dark spots and then from there I think it's pretty smooth sailing we're almost done
What time is it now? 1.46. Jesus fucking Christ. Yep. <laughs> time flies when you're streaming. Really strong mustache game in this in this scenario. Stipple, there's uh, sesame seeds on this roll. There's just a couple little like brushy outlining things I want to do.
the darkness stuck in my head. I've been watching so much of Justin Hawkins Rides Again, his, his YouTube channel. I don't know why. I just like what he has to say. Uh, I like his input. He's like just a guy who cares about music, you know? Specifically rock and roll music. That was such a strange band when they came out. No one had any clue what to do with them because it was like rock revival. But he was like really naked. This is like kind of like a bony guy. He sang really high. It just weirdly worked. It took me a very long time to learn how to appreciate it, though. Now I finally appreciate it. And I think a lot of it has to do with this YouTube channel, but... I think the last thing I gotta do is some shading on these characters and then I am going the F home. Ooh, Ooh. all right. Yeah. Yep. You know, normally I would take a lot more time to be doing like shading and, and whatnot, but as I mentioned, there's, which I guess was sort of intentional, because I guess this, the point of this story was more or less to, to be like a real cartoon, more than like a, an art com like an art comic. There is a lot more of a graphic quality that I'm going for with these. I'm trying to keep it a little, because I'm, I'm a lot more focused on getting the story across than really making something super image heavy, you know? So I got like where I used to really cross hatch a lot. I'm not really doing that as much. It's still a lot of cross hatching and stuff, but I'm saying I'm trying to keep it a little simpler this time. Cause I feel like also, especially when it comes to DIY printing, a lot of that shit gets lost. There's also, I, I, I definitely have the intention of doing a fine tuning before I uh, scan these. I also want to do some uh, screen toning and grayscale stuff on them, uh, which maybe I'll spend the whole episode doing. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I gotta think about that a little more.
there are also times where I want to keep it a lot more brushy, strokey, kind of cartoonist sort of stuff too. Like what's, I don't know what's a good example. Ah, oh, fuck, there is, there is an example that I have in my head, but I, I can't think of it at the moment. Yeah, I fucking remember. I just feel like a lot of the funnies and or not funnies, but just like old style comics. Oh, what's, what's like Calvin and Hobbes? I feel like is pretty strokey, and there's definitely some color in there too. But I'm talking like the black and white Calvin Hobbes kind of stuff. I feel like there's a certain like letting the taper of the brush do a lot of the talking sort of stuff, and uh, that's I like to I like to incorporate a lot of that too, but really only when it's necessary and not. I don't know. It just has to happen naturally. Everything that I do has to happen naturally. And for the most part, there is a graphic quality that I really enjoy about these uh, panels so far. Then there's some rawness and then some... Uh, just a little more uniform and a little more spelled out uh, shit, at least from... Quest for Materiality or some of my weirder comics, you know? But on that note, I think I'm going to pack it in here because I'm very tired. It is very late. I have to be up in the morning and I got basically... The, all these pages when I work on them, I think I said this already, is I'm going to definitely do a little bit of fine tuning before I scan them and letter them and whatnot. But uh, this is the, the, the leg work as far as inking goes. And uh, yeah, there's not going to be much else that changes from here. I'm, I'm going to be doing, like I said, some, some grayscaling, some screen toning, and uh, maybe just some overall, uh, like a once over inking or something like that. But this is really, this is, this is the hard part, and that's why I brought it here, for all of you to go watch and look and have fun. So with that in mind, oh, 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 okay, I think it'll work, <laughs> okay, um, so here is a bit of a close-up, you know, you got him opening up the food truck, you got him talking to one of the, the, the guys, Sort of an angle inside the whole food truck, which I think some shading here, like some uh, screen tone here and here will definitely emphasize that a lot better, you know, because you have your, your factory in the back with the, the cloudy sky. You have your uh, construct, typical construction worker asking how much his buttered roll is and then walking away with it in his fist um, and a bunch of speech bubbles. I think this is great. I, I'm really happy with this page. I'm really, and I'm really happy that all these pages are still, despite, you know, having some days in between or weeks in between working on them, they're still all consistent and all kind of serving the vision. Uh, that makes me happy. That makes me uh, very, very happy. So next time I work on the, the next time I work on the, uh, hold on, let's see if I can move this back. Hold on, let me just, I'll bring this up. There we go. Next time I work on the stream, uh, I'm going to be doing, uh, I believe it's page six. And I think most of the streams from now on are going to be, uh, they're going to be working on this book to get it done. Because I'd like to have it done by the end of September. Because it's, it's going to be a short one that leads to, uh, I don't know if exactly I'm going to be printing it um, immediately. Because I have a, another comics endeavor with a uh, partnership coming up pretty soon that I'm very excited about. Um, so I'm trying to just get the meat and potatoes uh, or at least get this to um, the uh, cliffhanger stage so that if I wanted to print it, it would make sense as like a 20-pager 
but if I wanted to leave it open ended, maybe as a web comic or an archive sort of thing, and then print it later when a bunch of other parts of the story are done, I could do that as well. But now I'm rambling, um, and um, that means it's time to go home. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining in. I really appreciate it, everybody. Thanks to all my recurring burger heads. Shout out to you, Keith Murray, and Alex uh, fucking Oliver. Faraz, I don't know if you've ever watched, but uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> and uh, uh, Brittany says hello, boys day. Um, I'll be back Friday? Friday. Is Friday going to be open? Anyone be here? Well, you said Friday, so it's going to be Friday. Okay. I'll be back Friday at 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Burgerheads unite. Peace out, Keith. I'll see you Sunday.